Right, today I'm going to demonstrate how a Burns Trisonic air coil can be made with very simple equipment. Um, the pickup in question is this, the uh, Burns Trisonic. It's a simple former, it's split down the middle, um, it has a piece of black PVC tape already fitted, uh, which is the sticky side out, and the bobbin uh, will be, with the wire will be wound over that. I've done a few uh, preliminary items, like I've got some pieces of cotton cut there for tying off. I've got some pieces of masking tape ready cut, and uh, I'll explain what these two bits and pieces are for. The equipment is extremely simple, homemade tensioner. The uh, wire is um, coming from there, from the floor, very large reel, but that'll be on the floor in a minute, goes over a roller, and then goes through two felt washers which are tensioned and comes through a little nozzle there. The, um, the bobbin uh, is now fitted on there. Simple tape counter uh, from an old tape recorder and a single speed slow geared electric motor. Uh, right, part two, the um, little piece of elastic and uh, little rubber grommet there is to ensure that the former is held in place on the shaft and also gives it a sort of a soft start mechanism because it will turn freely on the shaft and when the, uh, the rubber bung is pressed against it the elastic is what drives it. Right, I've now attached the uh, wire to the bobbin I have a little end piece just taped to the edge there um, you can just about see that that's coming from the nozzle and it is now just about to start on there. So here we go. And what I'm going to do is gently feed it across here, not particularly evenly, it's not a particularly clever way of traversing but it does the job. So that's it for 5,000 or so turns. So I'm going to stop it again now and we'll pick it up at the end of the run. Um, just a little note here, I'm not too concerned about the accuracy of the, uh, the laying down of the wire because you'll see later when the, um, it, the coil of wire is taken off the bobbin um, it's uh, squashed and reshaped in any case so any layering that may have taken place carefully on this unlike a strap where it's deemed to be very important how the wire is laid down uh, an air coil is uh, is just that it's just a loose coil that is wrapped reasonably tightly um, at, at the end of the process so all I'm trying to do is get a reasonably even um, layering going on but it, it is purely by eye and by hand on this stage the only th the only thing we've got uh, that we can be constant on is the amount of tension that is placed on that before it hits the bobbin that's uh, 5400 turns there's uh, the counter shows 540 and there's another zero at the end from the um, 10 to 1 ratio that it runs at. I've put a little piece of tape there just to hold the output end in place and the, uh, the, the, the looped piece there is the inner piece. Um, as you can see I'm just using ordinary cotton. Um, they're tied off, they're not particularly tight because the next phase is going to be pieces of uh, masking tape. This is just to hold it together when I remove it from the, uh, the bobbin. Right, that's uh, all four ends tied off. I'm now going to remove those little nuts and uh, dismantle the bobbin so that the copper is now free. Right, here we are, there we are. There's the coil 
in its raw state with four ties on it and the disassembled parts of the former. I'm now going to tape over the, co the cotton and I'm going to put four extra pieces on before I then solder on the leads. So there we have the uh, output wire and that's marked still with a little piece of tape there. And that's the inner wire, which isn't. And uh, now I have two uh, pre-tinned, ready to go pieces of wire. I always use red for the outside, whether that's correct or not, but I, that's what I do. And I will wrap it on as many times as I can get on before I get bored. And leave about a good half inch there or so, a centimetre and a half for those modern people. And uh, get a decent amount of heat and solder on there so that it breaks through the um, lacquer on the wire. That's it. Just trim the little bit of excess off there. And before I do the other one, it's always best to do this one first. Slightly bit of wider bit of tape there. And it just needs trapping on over the top of that one so that it holds it in place and it has something to cushion it against the the rest of the the windings. There we go. That's that's one done. And the next one I will do in a similar manner. Now, of course, this is this is a, a tricky little job because you don't want to um, pull this too tight and break it, especially the inside one, or else you've lost. Then you'd have to do it all over again and throw this in the bin. Should have left a little more on this one this time but uh, that's another note to self mm -hmm. yeah That's that one. Cross them over and final piece of tape over those two there. Nice and central if you can. Right. Right, I'm now going to take about a 22 inch length of cotton tape and I'm going to Put a little bit of Pritt stick on it. Other brands are probably available. And I usually start wrapping around here. No particular reason, that's just what a habit I've got into. And then this needs to be wrapped as pretty tight and evenly as you can. And 
just be careful when you pull it through that you're not grabbing too hard on the edges of exposed copper when you do it. Get those trapped in nicely like that. As you can see, the handling of this is obviously going to rearrange all of the threads of copper. So, as I said, it wasn't too much of a worry about exactly how you lay it down with this particular type of coil. It's about as random a scatter as you could imagine. Okay, I'm just gonna hold it there and finish it off and then I'll come back to it in a minute. Right, nearly done. Just a little more gum on the final end. And I always tend to try and Put the outside wrapping somewhere on the top there so that it doesn't get interfered with with the uh, the edge of the case or the magnet and just use that little bit there to smear that in right and there you have one Burns-esque wrapped coil. Um, what I would normally do now is I would press it into shape in a an old vintage Burns base and drop it in there and Do a bit of basic shaping. It's, you see it's in there like that. I'm actually using one of the magnets to make sure that there's a, a good clearance gap in there. Pop that in there. Pop that in there. Nice snug fit. And one final reading, just to see that we haven't actually damaged it in that process. And there you have it, um, 7.43 and uh, 2.431 Henry's, it's not bad. And that's pretty much it. One ready to go, Burns Trisonic. Thank you.